everyone. Good evening. It is so good to welcome you to Wednesday Night Bible Study. Yep. That's where we are, middle of the week. And I think this, I know it is, because Sunday was Daylight Savings Time, so this is the first uh, Wednesday Night Bible Study while the sun's still on. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Well, we are studying 2 John. 2 John. And uh, these are three one kind of a, well, it's not really a long letter, First John, five chapters. Yeah. But these other two, you would think these would be two of the most favorite books of the Bible. Yeah, they're the shortest. Yeah. What This one I know is 13 verses. I haven't yeah. looked at Third John yet. 15 verses or something uh, like that? 14. 14. Look yeah. at that. I was right there. Almost right there at it. Well, it's, it's very interesting as we kind of, you know, make this transition from First John to Second John. Let's see how well you you study. What is what were some of the major themes in First John? Major themes in First John: yeah. love one another. Love one another. That's got to be. No, I mean, how many yeah. times did you hear that? Yeah, about a hundred, right? Right. So, uh, and I was listening today to getting ready for this, and uh, it's interesting how many times. It's, what they said was, First John gives those major themes that he repeats over and over again, mm -hmm. but he always has a way of adding just a little bit more or coming at it from a different angle. Yeah. So, but it, it, sometimes to me it sounds all alike. Love one another. Yeah. And if you don't love one another, you're a liar. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not doing it. <coughs> uh, okay, uh, what about walking in the light? Would have been a thing. Yeah. Light and dark, all the contrast, all the Johannian contrasts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, light, darkness, light, dark. Love, hate. Yeah, righteousness, sin. Yeah, yeah. Walk in the commandments. Yeah. We're going to hear that a lot in, in this little short letter, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that you've got us prepared there. When was this letter written? Who was it written to? Why was it written? Well, it's written about uh, 90, right in there. It okay. is uh, written uh, to. Uh, a chosen lady, and we're not sure whether that is a woman who uh, hosts a house church or whether it's to the church euphemistically, you know, to the church. Okay. To a church. I want you to hold on to that thought because okay. I, I didn't start us in prayer like I should have. Okay. So we'll, we'll come back to it because a good thought right there, okay? okay? Father, as we come to you, thank you for tonight. Uh, what insight. We're just excited to be in your word and we're ready to get ready to start talking about it. But Father, we know that everything we do comes to naught unless we have your blessing. So that's what we seek for, your blessing. Thank you for loving us the way that you did. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Now that's a very important thing that you said there, house churches. Mm -hmm. What is a house church? A church that meets in a house. <laughs> <laughs> not that's, complicated, is no, it? No, not complicated. It's, uh, uh, most churches in this in this era were house churches. That's right. It wasn't a central building like right. we, we come to. We go right. to the church. Right. The church was meeting in different homes in, in, in the community and right. stuff like that. Well, to me, this is a very, very, where love seemed to be the dominating theme of First John, I would say truth is mm -hmm. the dominating yeah. theme of this 13 verses that we're about yeah. to look at. And what to me is, is interesting First John, you remember how he started it? We saw him, we touched him, we're telling you what we experienced. And I don't have a problem with that. In fact, I enjoy that because that's a first-hand experience of the apostles mm -hmm. sharing with us what Christ, right. what they heard, what they saw, what they experienced. But now, like you said, in AD 90, things are changing rapidly. Mm -hmm. In fact, John may be the only apostle that's still alive. At Probably this point. is at this point. Right. Yeah. So. You know, it's one thing for, uh, you know, it, it really goes back even your experience at uh, Ground Zero. You were there. I mean, when you tell me something about Ground Zero, I listen because I know it's not just coming from something you read. It ain't coming from something you heard. You saw it. You experienced it. I, I just think that's so amazing. But a hundred years from now, I think there'll be people like you yeah. that, that were there that saw it, but they'll still talk about it and they'll write about it. But here's the issue. How do we know that they're telling us the truth? Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening here. It's changing from the apostles talking primarily about it 
to now we got these these preachers, these traveling preachers that are showing up yeah. and talking about the gospel, and 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 there's no guarantee that they're doing it for the right reason. Right, right. In that's fact, that's one of the biggest issues in the early church is mm -hmm. uh, how do you separate the wheat from the chaff when it yeah. comes to when it comes to traveling itinerant preachers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now that puts us in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> And, and to think about us even talking about the gospel here tonight, we're 2,000 years removed from it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's what makes the, the word so amazing is that we've got John's. John is willing to fight, and this is very important for us. He's willing to fight for the integrity of, of the gospel. Yeah. Uh, he's not willing to, to have church growth. He's not willing to call himself a success if the gospel is not being presented truthfully. Correct. And uh, so that's, that's very important. Um, there's something else I was thinking about. Um, those traveling preachers, um, oh, it'll come back to me. Oh, yeah. Those senior moments, you don't ever have them, do you? No. Oh, I have no. All the time. I'm not okay. too young for those. All right, then. Yeah. We'll just jump in with these 13 verses and see how things go. I, I love, this gets me excited, the elder. The elder, yeah. And that tells you a lot. In a hundred years, it's gone from Jesus and his disciples to the apostles. They're starting to institutionalize. They're, mm -hmm. or, they're becoming an organization. Yeah. And, and, and they've got different uh, positions in the church and stuff. And, yeah. and John is called the elder. elder. Yeah. yeah. So, he so, was the, what we would call the bishop at Ephesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's interesting. Yeah. But it's, and it's interesting to me how things are, are that's that's a big turn right there to start mm -hmm. you know we'll, we'll be having an annual meeting in a few weeks but we choose the officers of the church mm -hmm. we, we, and you know we got to go by the manual and you, you got all this organization but th that's just starting to happen here at with yeah. the early church it hadn't really you hadn't seen that much in the gospel stories right. and, and the uh, uh, Book of Acts. Yeah, it, it, it's it's gonna it's a process that's gonna take three or four hundred years. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Even two thousand. Yeah, you know, we're still trying to work on it and get it right. Okay, so I, I know who the elder is. Okay, who's this lady? Well, she's either a lady who hosts a house church, or he's talking about the church. Bride of Christ. Because right, because the uh, uh, it was not unusual in this period to refer to the church as a she. Right. As the, the bride of Christ is a lady. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, that kind of says, seems to fit the description here. Chosen yeah. by God and to her children. Yeah. And and this is the thing John can say with a, with a clean heart, pure heart. I love whom I love in, in the, the truth. truth. Right. It's got to be in the truth. If right. it ain't in the truth, he's not going to give it his, his attention. And not I only, but also all who know the truth. Uh, you know, I've gone through the, the process of the Church of Nazarene is one I appreciate very, very much. And uh, um, you, you just can't you just can't stand up and say, I, I've got, I've been called to pray, so I'm a minister, so therefore we're supposed to accept that. No. Yeah. You've got to go through a long process. Uh, it's a process of examination. It's a process of education. It's a process of experience. And, and that's all good because in the end it weeds out those who perhaps are not yep. sincerely tied to the truth. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You know, there's something to slip through. I yeah. what you mean. All right. And again, notice this emphasis of truth because of the truth. All right, so let's stop right there. What is the truth? The truth is Jesus. Okay. What is it about Jesus? Wouldn't you say that there are some things about Jesus that we all have to believe? It ain't that, like, you know, we've got these people here, you know, two of them say, well, we believe this. The other two say, we, well, no, we believe that. No, oh, there, there, there is a certain set of beliefs about Jesus that we have to adhere to. Uh, one is his incarnation. There you go. That he became a human <laughs> being. being. Yeah. All right. Uh, how about his death on the cross? Right. We've got to it all is. agree that something happened on the cross. And the resurrection. And the resurrection. Right. Exactly. And I think I tie in the ascension, yep. and I tie, tie in the return of Christ. Those yep. are five things are non-negotiable. Right. If you if you have a problem with any of those five things, his his appearance as a human being, 
his, his, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, his coming back again, then you leave Orthodox. Orthodox. <laughs> yeah, we both had the same yeah, word. Yeah. 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 Uh, and that makes you, uh, John would get boiling if you step out of those five churches, yeah. as, as we're going to see here. As yeah. we're gonna do it. Okay, verse 3. Grace, mercy, and peace. It sounds like the Apostle Paul there. From God. Yeah. The Father. Uh, Paul says grace and peace. Mm -hmm. John adds mercy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing about this is I look at this verse. Um, th there is no separation of the Father and, and Christ. No. Uh, if you were to ask John, who is God? Or is, 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 it, is it God God or is Jesus God? The answer would be yes. Yes. <laughs> Man, we must have been studying the same thing. Yeah, really. that. That's good. Yeah, he, he doesn't. He doesn't depart from that truth. Right. Okay. Will be with us in truth and love. So the Father and the Son have not abandoned us. They're they're helping us mind this truth and to embrace this truth yeah. of what has happened. And you see the two. Uh, you see the two principal. Uh, features of the gospel which is truth and love mm -hmm. there is there is the truth mm -hmm. and then there is love both of which are Jesus but you get this uh, you get this uh, some people want to separate God's love from the truth or from holiness right. and, and others want to separate God's holiness from his love mm -hmm. and you can't separate the two right the, the right. two are together okay that senior moment that I was having a while ago came I'm back there. Came right back to you. Yeah, I'm about to lose it again. Can you believe that? Wow. <laughs> um, okay, sure. Yeah, it'll come back to me again as we can talk about it. <laughs> and, uh, man, y'all are watching this live. <laughs> this is great. Okay. Um, grace, mercy, and peace, the Father and the Son, and, uh, and truth and love go hand in hand. Okay, it's given me great joy to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as the Father commanded us. Uh, some of your children. Mm -hmm. Not all your children, but some of them. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a little bit different, I think, from uh, the parable Jesus taught about the tares and the wheat. Mm -hmm. we, we know that we live, live in a world where, okay, that singing moment, this is the third time I've tried to get this truth out. I've got to get it out while I'm kind of yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, here it is. The world. Uh, in 1 John, the enemy was the world. Mm -hmm. in, in 2 John, the enemy is not the world. It's, it's a compromised church that, that, that compromises the truth. Yeah, I, I read something Say, in one of the commentaries. that was going to yeah, be good. I, I read something in one of the commentaries. It was very interesting. He says, it says, Satan doesn't need to attack the church. He joins the church. That's it. Bing. That's exactly right. And, and and that's why John is fighting just as hard in this short little letter about, you know, compromising truth in the right. church as he, it, being a church that is being compromised by um, a, a lack of, of, of passion for the truth mm -hmm. is just as dangerous as the world we, we find ourselves living in. Right. You know, we all, we all say, you know, we've got to come out of the world and be the church. Well, that's true, but the church has to be truth. If right. it's not truth, then John has a big problem with right. it. Um, and then this concept of walking in the truth. That's a continuous process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, there's nothing static about right. the gospel. Right. You know, sometimes people say it's boring. Ain't no way. It's, it's always moving. It's always changing. It's always transforming. Um, I've changed my hat. I used to, I do still have to get along and study a lot. That's part of my uh, practice. But another part of my practice has been walking and studying. Mm -hmm. that, it, it, sometimes I think just to keep the blood pumping in my body helps my brain. Yeah. And uh, But I, I, I do. I spend so much time walking and thinking and, and, and wrestling with my sermons in my head as I'm doing that listening to scripture and stuff. It's just amazing. Oh, yeah. That's a good way to do Some of the greatest certain sermons I've ever written have been as I was going to sleep at night and in the morning they're not there. Oh, that's, that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I can't do that. I can't hold on to, to a thought five seconds. Um, 
Okay, so this walking and commanding like Enoch did in the Old Testament, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's dynamic, it's moving. All right, so now, dear lady, I am not writing you a new command. You said this in the first letter. Right. But one that we've had from the beginning. I ask that we love one another. That's always been part of God's experience yeah. with us. I think that's so neat. All right. Verse 6 says, here's a new definition. This is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. Love is obedience. That's a good definition of love. And love obedience, is obedience. And obedience is love. It comes full circle here in this mm -hmm. sentence. And, yeah. uh, and these are all things that God has told us to do. Yeah. So as you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. All right. And that that can be that can be hard to do, as we're going to find out here in a minute. Oh, I think we experience it every day. Yeah. <laughs> trying to trying to do it. Okay. <coughs> I say this because many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. That's that's Gnosticism. Right. Jesus couldn't have had a real body. Right. Jesus didn't need to die a real death. Uh, he was just a ghost-like figure. So anybody that goes around, and it's amazing, you wouldn't think that would be such a critical aspect of the gospel, but it is. Yeah, well, it drives a lot of philosophical uh, thought that goes afterwards. If Jesus wasn't real, then who needs, you know, who needs a who needs a savior? Right. And uh, John is also talking about Jesus's humanity uh, in an ongoing sense, in and in, in using the present perfect here in, in several of his statements. He's talking about Jesus did not. Get off the throne, come to earth, and and be human for thirty three years, and then go back to heaven as the divine son. He took his humanity back with him. That's important. Right. That's important to note that he, as our high priest, he took his humanity back with him. Right. And he continues to be human even right. today. Right. Right. Okay. So, uh, it's interesting how he says, uh, you know, if you are someone that's trying to deny the incarnation of Christ. Uh, that you got that you got that let's see this is important they got that viewpoint from the world because they better not get that viewpoint in the church right and uh, and it, and this goes back to how I try to help our people understand you know when Jesus gave the great commission it was those apostles that were supposed to take the gospel to the world well you only can live you know 80 90 years and now you got it being handed off to another generation that are going to call themselves ministers of the gospel or preachers and and some preachers are, are, are true preachers uh, and that's not mean that, that, that you're good in, in the words that you speak yeah. but you're good in what you know about Jesus Christ. There's a difference between is. being a good speaker and being a good preacher. Absolutely. And so uh, uh, you, so the place that has to be protected even through to, through to this day, is the pulpit. Right. You don't let any person just in the pulpit. Right. You, I'm supposed to know if this person in the pulpit is knows the truth, mm -hmm. and if they don't know the truth, they don't have no business in yeah. the pulpit. In the pulpit. Right. You got to know who Christ is, but we, but we live in such a time where. You know, it's really interesting in Church of Nazarene um, used to have revivals all the time. So, I mean, we used to send preachers to the pulpit mm -hmm. all the time. And uh, I don't know if in your pastoring experience, I've been pretty fortunate here. But I can tell you about a time or two where I'm here. Yeah. So, how do we know that which is true? How do we know? Yeah. Well, I think we have to know the Word. That's right. And we have to know the Spirit. And I will dare say, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I, I wasn't guilty of when I started, but, but absolutely, you got to study the Word. Mm -hmm. And you got to know it. That's yeah. it. If, you know, I, I'm just talking as preachers tonight, right now. You know, if we preachers can't study the Word, we ain't got no business being in this profession. Right. That's who we are. That's what we are about. 
we got to know the Word of God. And, and, uh, and, and many, many years ago, God, God got a hold of me about that, and, and I made a commitment to, uh, to know His Word, and I'm still living in that commitment even today. And, and the joy of it is that it makes you a better minister. Right. In any, you never know what situation you're going to be thrown in, but it makes you better when you right. know that word. It sure does. Okay, well, this is good. Where he says, any, you know, John, don't, he, he don't mind hurting your feelings. No, not at all. If you're in my, pul if you're in my pulpit lying, you're a deceiver. Yeah. And not only that, you're an antichrist. An antichrist, right. That was about five words right there. Man, but he don't care. Because he wants the truth to be known. All right? Watch out that you do not lose what we have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. So every church is going to be accountable for how they handle the truth of right. God. And, and John here has taken it very seriously. Uh, to uh, uh, So what, what, you know, what I'm trying to say too, and, you know, I'm not saying it for these people here, Everybody that's watching, you know, uh, I'm coming to the, the not anytime soon. Don't misunderstand when I say the sunset, but what I'm interested in is not, um, you know, who will be the next fancy um, person that is in the pulpit at Battlefield. Mm -hmm. I want to know if they're going to tell the truth. Yeah, uh, that's very important to me, and I, I want to be a minister that goes out where our people are confident in, in the truth of the gospel. Right, and so. Find that to be very, very burdensome. All right. Anyone have, what, go back a second. I can do it. Right. No, no, no command. <coughs> I love I did that. Well, yeah, you did that well. <laughs> yeah, uh, watch out that you do not lose what we have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. What what reward are we talking about? Well, I think it's when Christ comes back and and he uh, uh, examines the word that we've done. Okay. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. <laughs> but what do you see? Well, I, I, I see that uh, uh, the reward of the, the reward of the work, like you, that, mm -hmm. uh, that we are rewarded with disciples that understand the truth and know the truth. Right. Uh, not with those who are deceived or self-interested. Right. Uh, I think it's tied to the next one, the next verse, when he talks about those who get out ahead of the gospel. Right. Okay. Right see. there. Let's see if it does that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Yeah. And whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. Now, an early, an early movement that uh, is, is ultimately uh, uh, declared a heresy is that uh, this is the point at which we're trying to decide whether we have an apostolic faith mm -hmm. that we're going to base our faith on the witness of the apostles or whether there's going to be a new revelation for each generation, a new spirit. The, the spirit's going to choose new guy, have a new message for each generation. Right. Uh, and uh, uh, I think that's what he's talking about when he says you, anyone who runs out ahead of the gospel and does not continue, continue in the teaching of Christ, I think he's talking about that tension right there, about these these preachers, these Gnostic preachers, in this case, are going out and they are uh, they're innovating. Right, they're recreating the gospel. They're recreating the gospel exactly. in the image of the audience that they're yes. preaching to. Yes, it's those itchy ears, right? That you know we're tempted to scratch out the time right. for people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul in that fourth chapter of Timothy uh, says it probably better than anybody. Yeah, you know, we preach the word. In season, out in of season. season. Yeah. Good times, hard times. Yeah. Yeah, preach the word. It's, it, there's just nothing. And, and, and really, w when, when, we, when, we, when you were ordained and I was ordained, mm -hmm. it's, it's not that we were ordained. I know we used the phrase in the ministry, but it's more than that. You're passing on that which has gone before you right. to the to the next generation, and then when, when you know that it's the passing on the truth, the continuity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not about you feeling good that now I'm a minister. I'm word. No, you're responsible to pass on that. That is such a and 
Pass on what you receive. Yeah. And you can feel that. Um, you know, again, I, I just I try to be careful because I, I don't want to make it look like I, I exalt myself or all that stuff. But man, I can tell you when um, uh, I, I can get, you've been around a group of preachers and you're going, yeah. this don't seem right. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and it's like, uh, and this is even, we, we have to be careful. Uh, uh, of course, joking. Uh, and I love to cut up more than anybody. I'm, I'm, I love laughter and I love smiles. And But there's a lot of coarse joking that just has no room around ministerial. Well, and there's also, a, there's also a spirit that comes through occasionally of people who, who want to be somebody. Right. You know, right. Uh, I can remember when I was in Bible college, there was a guy... Uh, who uh, he was going to set the world on fire, you know. He really wanted to be somebody. You, you, you could tell he had an ego, right. ego issue, and so much so that he couldn't finish Bible college. He he took a call to a church, and I, I guess he eventually got ordained. You know, well I know he eventually got ordained, and I was I was uh, because I've heard a couple of the sermons, and uh, they just don't, you know. But I was disappointed this week when I read that he had become a district superintendent. Oh, well, maybe something. Maybe, maybe something changed. I don't yeah, know. Maybe administratively, because that's really <laughs> mostly what a DS does. Yeah, maybe it's yeah. just a, uh, something happened there. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. Okay. All right. Verse ten. <clears throat> just a few more verses. Not long tonight. No. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, look at this. Do not welcome him into your house. Do not welcome them. They come more than one. Ah, uh, the Didache. You know that, that's. Uh, it says if uh, a traveling preacher comes and he stays more than two or three days, or he asks for money, uh -huh. he's not of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, that is so good, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I would feel so unchristian. Yeah. To tell us, oh, hey, you're not even welcome in my house. <laughs> oh well. Well, you know. But what he's trying to, what we got to do is bring it back. Is he's protecting the truth of the gospel. He's right. not ashamed to look uh, bad if he's protecting the gospel. And if he's talking about, uh, he's talking about uh, the dear lady who is hosting a house church. He's he's saying don't 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 invite them into the church. Don't host them into the church. Don't right. don't give them the pulpit. That's right. Yeah. Don't don't. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, anyone, and if you do welcome them, then you're sharing in their wicked work. There you they're go. Just, they're just going to come in there and destroy what you're trying to do. And yeah. It's just going to be a mess. Okay. Now, as we land with these two, last two verses, you know, every every book <coughs> has an outline. And you, every letter, you know, if you write a letter, you, you're going to give some greetings. And that's mm -hmm. what John did here. Yeah. The, the, I'm the elder writing to the lady. Then you kind of deal with the body of the letter. This is mm -hmm. why I'm writing because of these issues. And then you come down to the end, and you just you, you kind of let them know, you know, what to expect next or something like that. Yeah. So he says, you know, I have much to write to you, and I do not want to use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to visit you and talk with you face to face, so that our joy may be complete. Absolutely. The uh, you can say a lot about. You can say a lot with pen, pen, and, pen and paper, right. but uh, they say as much as 70% of a message is in the nonverbals. Yeah. You know, the emphasis yeah. and, and stuff. And you, 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 there are some things, especially delicate subjects, that you've just got to do face to face. Right. I don't know if, uh, I, you know, reading through the Bible in the book of Numbers. And, uh, you know, Moses is a, would you, is a pretty respectable guy. Yeah. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. And so today I was reading about that rebellion from Korah. Mm -hmm. And it's 250. Can you imagine challenging Moses? Yeah. Oh, man. That's, that's big time stuff right there, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can't believe that. So uh, here, and, and that's going to happen in the next letter where 
the amazing thing is there is going to be somebody that's going to challenge John. Yeah. How can you do that? Yeah. This guy, this guy has got so many years oh, to yeah. walk with Jesus, and yet this guy's going to come up and say, I don't care who he is. Yeah. This is how we're going to run the church here. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, these are second and third John are church administration letters, if you will. You know, and, and uh, how many sermons have you heard from second and third John? Not many. Not many. Not many. The, the people uh, preach from first John, but I second and third. I have ever preached no, from. <laughs> I, they kind of get left out because they're very particular and very specific about, you know, mm -hmm. the events that they're dealing with. But uh, there's some important things to think about in here. You know, I think it's crucial. I think yeah. it's, uh, uh, I, I think we've we've sacrificed the truth of Christ many times, and we got to be careful. Yeah, too many people. Too many people have. I, I can, I can recall when I was uh, pastoring in New York. I had a lady in my church who uh, was the advocate for a particular televangelist. You know, I mean, really strong. And uh, this guy had been, this guy had gone to gone to jail and had been uh, convicted of fraud for his ministry, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But he had this big ministry in Florida going again, and she was a real advocate. And, and you could say what you wanted to about Jesus, but you better not say anything bad about him. Wow. She was so committed to him. And we have a tendency to get committed to what we can see. Right. You know, right. it's almost cultic. And uh, uh, I think John is trying to fight against that kind of influence uh, about, you know, the, the charismatic philosopher, preacher, teacher that is uh, trying to drag the church away from the truth that is Jesus. Right. Yeah. Well, John's going to show up. Yep. They, they want to take him on. He's going mm -hmm. to fight the battle. He's going to give him the opportunity. Yeah. All right. Last verse. And it kind of ends abruptly. The children of your sister, who is chosen by God, send their greetings. And what he's saying here is just other churches. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, we're pulling for you. Yeah. We're, we're in this with you and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, really these churches, you know, Ephesus was one of the churches that received from the seven letters of the book of Revelation. So, those, you know, you got Laodicea, you got Thyatira, um, some, some Pergamum. So, these are, there are other churches that are in close proximity to this area. Yeah, and uh, uh, the church isn't about I, the church is about we. Right. And uh, sometimes we seem we seem to cocoon ourselves off and uh, uh, we've got district assembly coming up here, you know, in May. And, uh, and uh, one of the things I appreciate about the Church of Nazarene is that we, at least historically, tended to get together. Right. We don't do so much anymore. Right. And that's, maybe that's a disturbing trend. Right. You know. Uh, I don't know. Changing times, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yes. Yeah, but I, I know what you're saying. Well, here's the thing about this letter. It can, it can seem to go quick, but I want to remind us how important it is to guard the truth right. of Christ. And that's what this whole letter has been about. And, and third, and again, it takes it from the church trying to hold on to its to its uh, to its uh, testimony in the world. Now the church is just trying to hold on to its testimony in the church. Right. When you get to third John, it's going to be trying to hold on to the testimony in an individual. Yeah. So it, it really is interesting. Yeah. Big, smaller, smallest. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll look at that next week. Okay. Okay. So there we go. Um, uh, it's a very important letter, and so I would encourage people. To, you know, if you feel like, wow, that wasn't much. Just maybe spend some more time reading it. Only thirteen verses. Yeah. Read that. Four, and uh, I would say, as far as uh, uh, as far as the warnings of Second John is, uh, test the word. Yeah. Uh, test what's being preached. Right. Look it up. Right. And. Uh, and pray about it and bounce it off other verses. Right. Uh, proof texting is is yeah. is really detrimental to the truth of the gospel sometimes, Absolutely. you know, because uh, there's a balance 
and a, and, a, and, a, and a truth that is at the core of the gospel that uh, can't be compromised. Right. And uh, uh, I, think, I think all of us, all preachers, myself included, uh, give pieces of the truth right. and uh, uh, we don't always capture the whole oh, yeah. the whole picture right. you know oh. you ever preached bad sermon? oh yeah <laughs> me too yeah uh, all the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it, it's not about again there's no preacher even if you if, if you if you're shown coming up with life, <laughs> okay just Keep digging for the truth. Yeah, because it's it, it's much it's much it's much better in a sense to send people home with questions than with answers. Oh yeah, right. You know that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want you, when people leave church, you want them to think, "Wow, what a God! Not yeah. wow, what a preacher!" Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, that's it. Okay, okay. close us out. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you this day that you have provided us the truth and that you've given us witnesses and the apostles and that you have given us uh, uh, a Savior that we can serve and know in truth. We ask that you guard our hearts and guard our minds and help us to uh, take John's word uh, to heart and be with us this coming week and be with the people in the, in, in the church and be with the people of Ukraine tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, see you next week.